clothing, the industry which is vastly responsible for ads like this. Now, the person of today's story is somewhat related to clothing, Amancio Ortega. Oh, by the way, if you haven't heard his name, that's okay. It's because he likes to keep it that way. I mean, look what he says. In the streets, I only want to be recognized by my family, my friends and people I work with. So yeah, a completely private person. But that didn't stop him from creating one of the biggest clothing retailers in the world. Indirex. According to Forbes, it stood at third spot in 2019 right next to Nike. That's correct, right next to freaking Nike, which simply implies how big Indirex is. But again, you have probably not heard about that name as well. That's because it is present in the form of subsidiaries such as Pull and Bear, Massimo Duty, and seven other brands, of which Zara is their biggest revenue machine. And yes, finally, a name which we all know. However, the reason why we're talking about him is his net worth, $64.2 billion. And to be honest, that's not even his best figure. For instance, in 2015, he stood as the richest man in the world for a brief period of one day before, of course, Bill Gates regained his spot. But it's just not about the money, right? So what is it that this guy did that took him from being an errand boy to becoming one of the wealthiest men in the world? And oh, the net worth is only a hook. What he did and how underrated he's been for his accomplishments is what really got me thinking. But that ain't it. What really got me hooked was his other face, which is somehow related to this, this, and this. So what happened? Before we get into the video, a little heads up, so as you know we're just starting out on YouTube, so if you can just hit the like button for the sake of the YouTube algorithm, it would really mean a lot, so thanks in advance. Now, born in 1936 Spain, Ortego comes from a pretty humble background that he had to quit school when he was just 14 years old to support his family. He started as an errand boy initially for a clothing company and he was good at his job, so as years passed, eventually he turned into a senior managerial roles in different clothing companies and keep that in mind for a while because I will come back to that. So as he was doing this, he got close exposure to what would be the expenses and cost of clothing to manufacture and he got his hands so deep into this that he eventually decided to do a little something of his own by manufacturing his own set of clothes and supplying it to retailers who would then put their brand labels on it. Oh wait, David, but somebody has got to design all these clothes, right? What's the point of doing something which is already being done? Well, remember how I told you that he played some senior roles in those clothing companies? Yeah, this guy apparently learned to design clothes on top of all these other skills. So yeah, he designed high quality stuff in women's clothing and lingerie. And in fact, he did so good that he decided to start his own clothing brand, but there was one problem. It was the 1970s and Spain was under the dictator Francisco Franco. Cool name by the way. And you know it was the 1970s and there were restrictions even about the clothing that people should wear and especially women and coincidentally that's what Ortego did. But good for Ortego because then this happened. Francisco Franco died in 1975, which also saw the transition of Spain from dictatorship to democracy. Now, moving on. Ortego opened his first store along with his wife in 1975 at La Corona called Zara. And that was it. It was a total hit among the public and let me tell you why. You see, the problem with fashion, especially when it comes to clothing, is redundancy, which means the same type of clothes round the clock over the year with hardly having any choice. And Ortego took this very seriously that Zara would bring out new designs every month. And even before you know it, those stocks are gone because a small volume of the specific design was only manufactured and then the next design is launched which as you know created a sense of urgency and curiosity and on top of that the icing was Zara moved the manufacturing process from design to stock in just two weeks that's right just two weeks and compare that to other brands which took over months to do that and this was called fast fashion and of course other brands caught on to this trend as well. Now with a great clothing brand and loyal customer base, Ortego expanded rapidly and before I get into the numbers, let me just put this down for you. During the massive expansion, Ortego doubled down to different brand subsidiaries and entering into every genre of clothing, men's, kids, women, luxury, 
cheap and if i didn't mention it before the clothes are priced in a modest way i mean some call it a bang for a buck i guess so to speak to put all these subsidiaries under one roof he named the company indirex so coming back to the expansion numbers as of 2019 indirex has expanded to nearly 7400 stores since 1975 and yes indirex did take a huge hit during the coronavirus closing over 1200 stores but considering how big it is it will eventually bounce back though so that's pretty much the work which ortego did which saw the expansion of indirex to such a big extent but on the contrary ortego is an extremely private person and he had given interviews only to three journalists in his entire lifetime but then he eventually had to come out because he planned to offer an IPO in 2000 and in 2001 he did offer it selling 20% of his shares which did put him on the map of the billionaires boys club and in spite of all the wealth he still hates in his office cafeteria and conceals himself from the outside world pretty cool right having all the money in the world and one unique thing about this is that he's happy about it great but wait David didn't you tell something about the dark side of Ortego or his other face or something like that well Remember how I told you about Zara's fast fashion trend to take it from design to stock in just a few weeks and still offer in a cheap price? Which raises a question, how are these companies capable of putting out those huge demands while keeping the prices as downhill as possible? The answer is the very foundation of globalization, outsourcing. And I guess you know where I am going with this, sweatshops. If, if you are not heard about that, it is a term which is used to describe a workplace with poor, socially unacceptable or illegal working conditions and that's exactly what happened with Zara. And this is not only about Zara, child labor is something in general about all these clothing companies and they have done it again and again and again and keep stating that we are doing our best to stop this which kind of questions the integrity of the company. See, any big corporation as like this would never take responsibility for such a thing then that's exactly what Zara did. So look, I don't want to get deep into this, it's just that when we look or hear a success story, we tend to look on the bright side, which is why I wanted to bring this up to your side. So all things being said, these kids working 16 to 18 hours a day just toiling away just so that they can have food on their plates and support their families, I mean, it, it kind of, it's, it's really sad. But you know what's even more depressing? And I will put this out right, I don't know what it is to go through stuff like that at such a young age and I can only imagine. But do you know who did go through those stuff? That's right, Amancio Ortega. And if he can't have empathy for these kids and especially being in a position to control and stop all these things, I don't know who else will. That's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys the next one.